scalar yeah basically uh magnitude uh mm. property uh, yeah. maybe i would say uh description of magnitude because the scalar has no direction it's non-orientated non-orientated it has only magnitude yeah like we have vector and scalar what would be the sc scalar um ve <clears throat> vector is a um, direction and magnitude and scalar is just direction oh no uh, just magnitude yes and if we would were to represent them on paper um the scalar wouldn't have an arrow on top of it arrow uh visual um states for vector that this is something orientated and has magnitude and orientated while scalar would be just a number without symbol of ve vector like two or three or four this all are scalars make sense yeah great so that's just uh recovery from the last class let's actually start now because we're gonna review previous classes let me begin with introduction hello everyone and today we're going to practice uh simple operations with vectors uh ba basic like addition subtraction and multiplication and uh, as a result of today's class you're going to be able to perform certain basic operations with vectors and we're also going to practice problem solving involving vectors any questions so far no no questions great and I suggest we start with re remembering what we learned in the previous class, because today we're also going to practice complex problems where we implement different tactics. So let's say triangle law of addition. Um, do, you do you remember it? Can you recall it? No. So what triangle law of addition says is that when you're adding up two vectors a and b uh, to visualize the result of this operation addition you need to transfer tail of either of the vectors to the head of another one basically tr transfer it without changing its angle re relatively to the axis this angle theta for example remains constant when we trying to visualize uh, addition right and yeah. in this case you can see that vector b was transferred to the hat of vector a a plus b right can you see this on this image and resulting vector will join the beginning of vector a and end of vector B. You can imagine it as your uh, translation uh, translation in space. For example, I walk out from my house, I walk to the store, I bought some groceries, and then I went to school, right? A, yeah. B, C, we have three points. But when you add up those vectors, you end up with your translation to school immediately mm -hmm. that's what happened to you actually you being transferred to school at the end of this two vectors and another interesting thing about triangle law of addition that you can translate both vectors to the and uh, to the head of another one for example in this <laughs> case we transfer vector b to the head of vector a but what would happen if we transfer vector a to the head of vector b before you answer that question i would like to ask you does one plus two equals two plus one um yeah wait yeah and that's not a tricky question yes it yeah. is and as yeah. well as vectors vector a plus vector b would be equal to vector b plus vector a yeah 
That's why we can transfer either of the vectors to the head of the other one when we add them up. In this case, vector A, which this vector, right, the one we start with, plus vector B, vector B transferred without being uh, changing, without his direction being changing, transferred to the head of vector A and finishes this addition. But look at this, B plus vector A would result in exactly the same product of, of this operation. Can you see this? Yeah, I see. Furthermore, you can see that it forms parallelogram all together because uh, whether this or this because this equals to vector b right it just yeah. translated to the other point in space it's it has same magnitude and same direction thus they're equal can, can you explain that one like the the tail to tail part again so tail to tail part we use in uh, in subtraction. Okay. Here is tail to nose. Okay. For addition. So, so uh, tail uh, nose. No, no tail of the one we are adding should yeah. be at the nose the one we are adding to. Okay, and then the tail to tail will be subtraction. Uh, yes, we're going to look into that as well. Okay. So in the diagram, the sum of the vectors a and a and b, a plus b, is found by translating the tail of vector b to the head of vector a. This could also have been done by translating vector a so that its tail was at the head of b. In either case, the sum of the vectors a and b is a c. Make sense? Yeah. Can we move on? Yeah, makes sense. So now difference of uh, two vectors. Here you can see that uh, they used um, different approaches. Uh, here, they basically reversed the vector in order to represent that it's negative, you see? And they're still using the law of addition. But now they're adding positive and okay. negative vector. Yeah. Can you see this? Because initial vector B looks to the right and vector B with minus looks to the left. That's what yeah. happens when you basically multiply the vector by minus one. That's we're going to discover a bit later. But you can already see the influence of uh, vector being multiplied by scalar. Scalar. Sorry. So, but you can use another trick. As I said, for subtraction, you can transfer tail of vector B to the tail of vector A. Yeah. And as you can see, the vector would start from the nose of a vector we are subtracting and will transfer to the nose of a tail we're subtracting from. So point one, point two starts from one, travels to two. Because in an, uh, in addition, remember where we have, it starts from the tail of the one we're adding to and goes to the nose of the one we are adding. Mm -hmm. While in subtraction, if you don't want to reverse your vector, you can use tail to tail. Take a look at it. Tell me if you have any questions because it's quite. Yeah, this is basically what I illustrated. Yeah. A minus B. Um, those are two different examples of, of how it could be uh, laid out. Uh, so, yes, you can lay it out this in both ways. But mm -hmm. because in this one, you subtract vectors. In this one, you add negative vector to positive vector. Right. So but if... you know that um, plus times minus is always minus. That's why it doesn't have 
yeah. effect on the resulting value. One assumption I made was that if the the ones we're subtracting they form an acute angle, but the one we're adding is an obtuse angle. Is that normally? Yeah, so? it creates the same uh, angle. It it is not different at all. Okay. Okay. Because if you see it, it this is also what you should have learned in a uh, um Physics. trigonometry or basic oh. tri tri um geometry that this mm -hmm. is uh what it's called can you remind me the names of these two angles that are laying by the slicing line of two parallel lines acute and acute, acute and obtuse yeah something like that but idea is that these two angles are going to be equal oh wait um... can you see this yeah 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 do you recall and yeah, even okay. visually they seem equal no yeah yeah Another, you see, imperial, imp empirical observation that helps us to prove theorem. But that's why you can represent it either way. You can reverse the vector and add the negative vector, or you can keep initial vector and simply subtract it from A. Mm. It, because it's, uh, I'm, I'm overcomplicating it, in fact, because you already saw it. it's as simple as that. You're just subtracting B and you have two different ways to visualize it in your head. Because yeah. on practice, on paper, you won't necessarily always visualize it. That's why we have calculus, not to draw these lines all the time. The drawing lines, it's for your convenience right now. Mm -hmm. Because now you can see that it's triangle. And for example, you can see that it has corner here Okay, now we can assume this corner equals theta, or let's say we know what A minus B equals by magnitude, right? And we can solve this as triangle. We can literally apply uh, methods we used to solve triangles like cosine law, sine law, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can use those methods in order to solve problems with vectors. If we have A plus B, how to find A plus B? We construct it as we did in previous example here. We construct them and now we just see that it's triangle but not uh, right angle triangle. It's just some random triangle but we know we can use cosine law still and we can use sine law in these types of triangles. We cannot use Pythagorean's theorem because it's not right triangle. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Pythagorean's theorem relates only to right triangles with right angle. Yeah. But we know sine and cosine law, which is great. So any questions so far? No. Great. So let's solve an example together to summarize what we learned. Please look at it and take your time, maybe around five, let's say up to 10 minutes. If you solve it earlier, just say to me. But you have 10 minutes to solve it. Is that enough? Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Take your time. If you have any questions, please ask me. And then we will look through it together. Let's start with a question together, right? And I'll okay. just give you hints where to head. <coughs> okay. So in the rectangular box shown below, OA equals A. We can see it on the picture. So simply these two edges of box is A and B, and height of the box is C. So length of the box is A, and the width of the box is B. A, B, C. Okay, easy. So now express each of the following vectors in terms of A, B, and C. Vector B, C. Let's look at the image. Here, B, C starts here and travels to this point, right? You remember that position of letters in the vector is important because first letter is where vector starts and second letter is where vector heading. So basically start and end. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So using that, please try to solve example A. Uh, so did you get an idea? You need to represent an answer. What BC equals two in terms of A, B, or C? Okay. Would, would it be A? No, B. but you're close. Expressing in terms of A, B, C. Like what does it mean to express each of the following vectors in terms of A? What does that mean? Uh, so it means that you have to write what the given vector is equivalent to in terms of A, B, or C. So you have to write, for example, vector okay. BC equals minus A. Yeah, it's minus A. Uh, yeah, okay. now you see? Direction. Yeah. Yes, but it's equal to A by magnitude and it's mm -hmm. reversed by direction. Okay. It just translated in the space a little bit. But mm -hmm. for mathematical expression, it's completely fine for us to say that vector BC is equal to minus vector A. Mm -hmm. Yusuf, did you get it? Yeah, it makes sense. So now let's try to solve B, guys. Okay. It's A. So GF. GF, yes. It's A, right? Yes. Good job. OB o is. Would it be D? So answer C is O B. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, you oh, said, did you say oh, oh. did you say D? Yeah, I think. <laughs> A B C D. <laughs> but we are not given with vector D. Um is it is it um a plus B. You're getting it. Is that right? You're killing it. Yes. OB equals vector A plus vector B. Okay. Or oh, vector okay. B plus vector A. Because you see, if you translate one of these vectors to the head of another one, you're going to make a diagonal by that operation. Yeah. And this diagonal is what OB is. So to help you, let me just spend a few moments to visualize the example D, for example, AC. And BG is going to be this vector. And OF would be this vector. Maybe now it would be a bit easier for you to visualize mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And is, is, is D going to be negative A plus B? Wait, no. Wait, wait, wait. It's close. Yeah, it's negative A plus B. So, wait, 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 wait. You say AC equals negative A plus B? Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Negative A plus B? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Yes. It will work. No, negative A plus B. Yes, yes. That's the right answer. Or we could also say... A B, plus negative Yeah, B, plus, B minus A. Okay. 
it would be more convenient because we're not using extra symbol. Yeah. And now you you see you don't even need to translate it because it's tail to tail. Yeah. B minus A starts at the nose of a vector that we're subtracting with. You see? Uh, mm -hmm. So, and uh, Yusuf. Now, Yusuf, what about O? Oh, uh, question F. No, no, no. By the way, AC. Now, now BG. Question E. BG. Um... Would it be so what vectors are you considering to make this combination to make bg a and b but uh, bg is in different uh, basically um, in different dimension than a and b a and b are flat they're in 2d oh i see bg is going up it's going up so then so then c and a because c, c and a are in the both dimension they're vertical yes exactly so they're um at an angle 90 degree to each other, and vector C gives us this uh, upwards component. Yeah. Uh, that's how they orientate it to one another. You see, you have three dimensions, basically, along vector A, along vector B, and along vector C. Yeah. But you know, it's it just <laughs> us. It's we who imagine it like that, like three-dimensional, because it's drawn like three-dimensional image, right? Like box that we always yeah, see. Yeah. But in fact, we see it in 2D. So it's not uh, uh, heights, it's just upwards. It's towards, it, it's a long y-axis. Yeah. These vectors are visualized only in um, 2D space, not 3D space. So we have directions to the right, upwards and at certain angle yeah so now if we have if we want to make bg basically what we need we need vector a for example because it we have it here mm -hmm. on the opposite side yeah. we have it here and what else we can have one vector here upwards which is c Mm -hmm. So what operation can we do with these two vectors, A and C, in order to get this BG? It's pretty similar to what Alan did with AC. Subtract. Oh, Yusuf? Um, so C is the angle and BG, and we're supposed to find BG, right? No, uh, we're supposed to find BG, yes, express yeah. it in terms of vectors A, B, or C. Uh, and we can add up those vectors, we can subtract them from each other. Oh, yeah, okay. So we just add them up and then subtract them? Uh, to find BG, we do find only B. one oper operation. For example, to find AC, we subtracted uh, A from B. Yeah. To find OB, we added up B and A. To find GF, we we just said that GF equals to A because it's simply translated upwards, right? Yeah. So what do we need to do in order to get BG? BG. We subtract them. We can subtract. We can subtract uh, uh, C and A. Great, exactly. Because it's ex same same thing that we did with B and A, but now instead of using B, we're gonna use C. C, yeah. 
So we're gonna subtract what from what? I was just overthinking it. Yeah, yeah. What it's would be yeah. what it would be? So BG equals what? Uh, BG equals um, uh, C minus A. Yes, exactly. And OF. OF. Um. So OF, it's the one goes all the way up. Yeah, to the corner. Oh, we add them all up together. So remember that we already know the OB. Yeah. Because you see, we need to find two vectors that are at the end and at the at the start and at the end of the second vector because OF this is the vector we're trying to solve. And how we usually solve it? We construct a triangle, right? Yeah. It's either a triangle of subtraction or addition. So let me see what vectors are touching vectors I'm looking for. For example, it's going to be OA, right? It's touching it. It's going to be B. It could be C as well. But there is also one thing. Um, there is this vector, which is diagonal, right? Yeah. We can, this is what is going to give us this. Uh, so we can see that we go to the right and up, basically. Yeah. So we can go up using vector C. Vector C. And yeah. we can go to the right by using, using vector A. OB. Oh, OB. Oh, okay. well, but if we use vector A, we're not going to get vector OF because uh, result won't be equal to OF. Result is going to be equal to uh, OE. Let me clean up the drawing a little bit. You see? Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. No, 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 now it's clear. Look, uh, if we add up C and A, yeah, we're going to get C this. A. We're going to get this vector. Yeah. But then if we do it with OB, we can get F, right? Yes, we can get to point F. Yeah. You can so imagine it as walking, right, to the final destination. Yeah. OB and what? And C. Yeah simply up so it would be ob plus c, c. Uh, what is ob equal to ob it was um oh it was um B, B, A. B, A? I mean a and b sorry like add them up together so if you say it in the correct way it would be a plus b yeah so let let's write it down o f vector write this down you can copy this uh, simple three-dimensional image to your books and we will write just one vector here we're going to write of you don't need to copy all of the examples so of equals ob vector right plus vector bf is this correct yeah. OB plus BF, basically, if we look at the names of the corners. Now let's make a next line. How, this is how it's is it's a proper way to solve it. You make parallelograms with those vectors, and that's how we get this three-dimensional image. So and that's you if you do that, you can see these corners and you can basically support your um, problem solving. Now you can see that vector OF equals OB plus BF, OB equals OC plus OA, right? Yeah. And plus BF, BF, it, it equals OD. Am I right? Yeah. Now let's write it OC equals B vector, right? Yeah. OA equals A. 
and OD equals C. And look at that, we don't need to struggle to solve it. You just write it down as it is, and it helps you to find the correct answer. You see, I didn't wrote something uh, like extraordinary, right? That OF equals OB plus BF, you can see that. Yeah. You can visualize it. You can construct it in your imagination. Then you also can see that OB consists of two other vectors. We And we have to construct OB using those two other vectors because that's what giving to us in the question express each of the following vectors in terms of A, B, and C. So we have to simplify the problem and bring it to the initial th three basic fundamental vectors. And that's what you can do with vectors in space. Imagine if A, B, and C would be my three axes, X, Y, Z. Have you heard of them? Yeah. So imagine if these three vectors would be just vectors along axis x, along axis y, and along axis z. And you can represent any vector in this cube that lays within this three-dimensional space. And it's not necessarily looking along the x-axis or along the z-axis, right? The vectors in three-dimensional space can direct wherever they want in 360 degrees around them in this right in a spherical basically area guys yeah. yeah so we now you can see that we can visualize vector of it's like three-dimensional vector right if you visualize it 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 towards to the right to the left and upwards in three dimensions at the same time. Mm -hmm. So is there any questions about this? No, I'm good. Let's sum up. So here's the addition. But you see, tail to tail works both ways. Tail to tail for addition, it would be a diagonal of parallel parallelogram that you can construct based on these two vectors. This is tail to tail for addition. But more convenient ways to transfer this vector to the nose of another one. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same for sum and for addition, subtraction. Any questions? No. Would you like to spend some time on this page or you have it written down in your textbooks? Uh, I have it written down. Yeah, I have these right now. Oh, okay. Take a few minutes and we will move on. Okay. Okay, guys, do you need more time? No. Thank you.
let's move. Multiplication, finally. But by still by sc scalar. Do, do you have a reasonable question why we're not multiplying by vector? Why we're multiplying by scalar? Um, <clears throat> Don't worry, I'm going to answer this question because mm -hmm. it's too hard to multiply vector by vector for you right now. So we're going to start with something more easy like multiplying by scalar okay so to begin with please take a note how you represent multiplication of vector by scalar ck times vector a and that's not a coincidence i'm not saying vector when i'm saying k right Make sense? K has no sign of vector on top of it. That's how we see that it's scalar. It's not a vector. Mm -hmm. So basically, what happens when you're multiplying a vector by scalar? So by multiplying some vector A, for example, by different values of k can affect the direction and magnitude of a vector. Depending on the values of k that are chosen, um, the value of a resulting vector can vary. For example, if you're multiplying by positive or negative scalar, it will affect the direction of a vector in different ways. So the following example demonstrates the effect on the velocity vector when it is multiplied by different scalars. Example number one. An airplane is heading due north at 1,000 kilometers per hour. The airplane's velocity is represented by v. Draw the vectors minus v, 1, uh, 1 over 2v, vector and minus 1 over 2 v vector and give an interpretation for each. Now, why not to do it? Do you have any questions about the um, question? W can Do you think you can solve it on your own? Maybe. I can, maybe yeah, Let's, I let me solve this I one for you and you're going to practice with the next one, okay? Okay. Yeah. So, and an airplane is heading due north, so that's why it represented upwards. Right? North on compass would be here. Put here it would be south. Here it would be what? East. And mm -hmm. to the left would be west. Genius. Uh, that's as simple as that. It can. This representation is genius because we using a uh, compass, we can define direction so easily. For example, instead of saying 40, like trying to explain that vector is looking at 45 degree to the x axis, you can say north 40 degree due east, right? You're heading north and 45 degree due east. You're heading south, certain angle towards east or towards west. That's why they say northeast or southwest. Basically to define direction and that's what vectors are about. And here we have vector V that equals to 1000 kilometers per hour. And we have to find, to draw vectors minus V, 1 over 2V, and minus 1 over 2V, right? Let's think, before that, minus V, it's basically equals to minus 1 scalar times V. Is that right? Yeah. 
And remember, we already discovered then when vector has a minus in front of it, its direction getting inverse, reversed, or opposite direction. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Or do you remember that? The way we just did with addition and subtraction, we discovered that we can either reverse vector and perform addition, like a minus b is equal to a plus minus b, right? Yeah. And in this way, it, when we just have a minus b, a minus b, it would be tail to tail. And if this is a, this is b, would be like this, right? Yeah. But a plus minus b, we would have b reverse, right? Minus b looking to the left. Because initial positive b looking to the right. Make sense? Yeah. And if we add up it, if we add it up to the A, it would be just transferred to the nose of A, right? It would be transferred here, but looking this direction, and the resulting vector would be exactly the same. That's how we discovered what happens to vectors when they have minus in front of it. So what would be V multiplied by minus one? If we heading north, where would be the resulting vector heading? V times uh, south. Exactly. It would be heading downwards. So if to visualize it, it would be like this, right? Towards south. This is minus V, correct? Yeah. But what about its magnitude? Does the magnitude getting affected? No. Exactly. Because we're multiplying by Schuyler, by scalar that is not a fraction less than one if it would be fraction less than one then what would happen to the magnitude it would increase or no it would it would decrease like any scalar multiplied by fraction less than one it would equals something less than it was initially and when we multiply the vector by scalar, that is not negative, but it's a fraction of less than one, we're getting vectors that is shorter than the initial one, but its direction is not affected because we don't have minus. That's what happens when one over two times V vector. We're going to have vector that's still heading north, It's still heading north, but it's twice as short as initial one. You see, initial one starts from the south and heads all the way to the north. If we divide it by two, we're going to have twice as short vector that is, you see, basically this would be the vector one over two V vector. Does it make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, it makes sense. What What would be happening if uh, we multiply by negative one over two? Well, if you multiply the one half by negative one or the well, if we multiply V by negative one over two, this is the third oh. example that we need to find. Um, you would go neg the negative direction and half the magnitude. Exactly. So if we were to represent them all in same like space, they would start from the same point, right? All the three vectors. Actually, all of these four vectors, initial vector V, 
that is heading north, right? Then vector minus V that is heading south. Then vector V divided by two that is heading north, right? Guys. Yeah. And final one divided by negative one over two would be heading south, but would be still a half of initial vector. Am I right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, can I say that all of these vectors are like they have same V in them? Yeah. They have same V in them, but they have different scalars with them. Mm -hmm. It's interesting uh, thing to notice because later we're going to see that it's going to be really helpful in order to simplify many problems because we can simply set up, for example, one basic vector and we can represent as many vectors as we want that are having the same direction but having different magnitude and not same direction that they can lay within same line, basically. And you can use this one vector to represent a thousand of them by using different scalars, for example. This is what we're gonna see in next examples. So here's the solution. You can see that we were right. Can you compare it? Yeah, it's a little bit. Oh, great. Pardon? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, here we, did, we forgot to mention that initial speed was 1,000 kilometers per hour. And what would be the speed when we multiply by negative 1 over 2? Negative 500. No. Magnitude would be positive. Remember, magnitude is always positive. Direction becomes reversed. Oh, OK. But this and uh, magnitude right. of a vector would be divided in half, right? Yeah, but can you not? You can you still not write negative five hundred, but just no, you five. can't. Okay, because negative five hundred is scalar. Okay. You cannot write negative five hundred vector. Okay, you can write negative one over two v, and say that it's equal. It's uh, you can say that it's 500 kilometers per hour due south. Okay, yeah. You cannot say that it's negative 500 because a magnitude is never negative. Okay. How, imagine how you can have negative mass or negative speed. You're never, never having negative speed. You're always changing direction of your positive speed. But, if I walk backwards, does it mean I walk in with negative speed? No. If I if I, I walk backwards, I, I I move with positive speed, but I move uh, in relative directions. That's why we have north, south, west, east. In for people, it's orienteers. It's relative orientation, relative coordinates. People even can orientate in space using the stars. For example, this is also kind of measuring system. What if acceleration is negative, though? Pardon? What if acceleration is negative? Is that different than? Pardon? I don't understand. Which like acceleration could be negative, so why can't? Uh, acceleration negative, uh, because you in paper you can say that. But because when you say velocity, you say it's 50 kilometers per hour, right? Yeah. But you're not uh, specifying its direction. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're specifying its direction, for example, you move along x-axis, you can move in positive and negative directions. That's where you're getting minus and plus. Because direction can be set by basic vector that heading one direction. I can make, that's what, what we're gonna cover in next, uh, in next 
part of multiplication, but it's really interesting because, for example, what coordinate system in fact is x, y, z, or just x and y? Well, let's keep it simple. X and y. We have two basic directions towards x positive and towards y positive. This is negative y, and this is negative x as well as with vectors. Do you see this? Yeah. That's why we call the two-dimensional space x towards x positive towards x negative. Because these axes is basically vectored towards certain direction. But mm -hmm. that's why you have negative velocity. Because this way we calculate it as positive. If it's heading this way, we calculate it as negative. Because uh, if you you basically as we did before you add um negative you always add but you can add negative value negative value would just state that it has different direction as well as negative acceleration means we are reducing the speed or uh, accelerating backwards accelerating towards stopping right Mm -hmm. Every second, we're closer to stop. In the other way, every second, we're closer to gain more speed. Okay. That's why yeah. acceleration could be negative and positive. Okay. I mean, the uh, vector, um, the, the velocity cannot be negative itself, like... Uh, in in nature yeah i got it yeah. i understand that so I, great I got, I got it confused for um, a vector but it's scalar quantity yeah because for example when in problem when you solve it you say that we decrease the speed for 20 kilometers that's mm -hmm. when you're subtracting 20 kilometers from your initial speed mm -hmm. like but it doesn't mean that your speed is negative Mm -hmm. speed remains being positive you just applied like a counter action opposite action because for example uh, that's what's happening when I'm pushing table towards the ground table is pushing me or like when I sit on the chair I push chair to the ground chair pushing me upwards there's always a counter action and that's exactly the same with vectors. If there is, for example, velocity, we have velocity. There are always going to be vectors that are trying to decrease the velocity. So looking in a negative direction to velocity. Make sense? Like a drug of air. When you run or when you fly in an airplane, you have drug of the air that's stopping you from accelerating. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And can we say that it's negative velocity that we're gaining gaining from going through air. No, it's just like counter force that decreasing our velocity. Yeah. So great. Uh, is that clear now? Yeah. Here's the solution. Here's the summary. So now we saw that if we multiply by a positive number we direction won't change right if we multiply by any scalar between zero and one the length of the vector would decrease if we multiply by negative well a negative scalar so it's gonna change direction to the opposite one right mm -hmm. and at the same time if uh the k value or scalar is between negative one and zero. It means we're going to change the direction as well as we our vector is going to get shorter. In any other case, uh, when k is greater than one or negative one, the length or magnitude of vector would increase. Is it clear? <clears throat> Uh, Yusuf? Yeah, that's clear. So now let's talk about collinear vectors. It's really cool stuff. 
So this is what I've been telling you about that. Uh, so it, basically, let's look at what they say to us. If we multiply in a vector A by the scalar zero, the result is always the zero vector. Do you remember it? We, we also had a zero vector. So basically zero vector has zero magnitude, but its direction is, is uh, saved from vector A. It's hard to imagine. You see like this arrow, A times zero, negative 0 0.2. Do you see this? A times negative 0 0.2. Yeah. So basically, this what's happening? As we approach 0, the limit. Yeah. As we approach 0, the length of vector will keep increasing infinitely. Or kill, keep decreasing infinitely up mm -hmm. until it turns into 0. But the direction of this arrow will still remain the mm. problem is that magnitude is zero and now that's a zero vector and no matter what you multiply by zero vector you're going to get a zero vector so when we multiply a vector by minus one we don't normally write it as negative vector right when any vector is multiplied by Negative one, its magnitude is unchanged, but the direction changes to the opposite. Um, and the cool stuff that collinear vectors are those vectors um, which are parallel to each other, first of all. So they lay in the same line, right? Basically, we set up the same direction. For example, along x axis, or as it shows here, at an angle to surface, right? You see, they all parallel to each other. Yeah. So the if vectors are parallel to each other, uh, these vectors can be described as being collinear, but that's true only if there is possible to find a non-zero scalar, some kind of multiplicator, that is going to help us to construct those two vectors. For example, vector u and k, uh, u and v, sorry, u and v would be collinear if we can find such value k that u would be equals k times v. If these vectors are parallel to each other, you see, for example, what I need to do with this vector in order for it to be exactly the same as this one, I have to multiply it by a negative number to reverse its direction, right? Yeah. Because right now I visualize them as similar or equal in their magnitude. Can you see this? In magnitude, they look similar. Yeah. So there would be such k value as negative one, which would give me u vector equals negative one times vector v, v vector. And now I can say that vector u and v are collinear. Collinear, I think. That's the right pronunciation. Please write this down, guys. This is a really important definition. And we'll move on to the problem solving. Any questions so far? No, no questions. Important to note is that you can use parallel or collinear uh, interchangeably. So wherever you prefer, people will understand what you're saying. But collinear sounds more smarter. And be, like smart guys appreciate it when you say it like that. Parallel is kind of funky.
Can I move on? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So example two. And uh, the vector X and Y are unit vectors. This magnitude one unit vectors, you see? So we can basically this vector set up direction and this magnitude is simply one because we can multiply one by any number and we're gonna get desired magnitude, right? Let's mm -hmm. visualize it as, this is why we call them uh, unit vectors. For example, in previous slide, A was a unit vector, you see? We multiplied A by any scalar and received desired value or desired vector that is collinear to A. So using unit vectors for like X and Y, we can construct some other vectors by performing many operations with X and Y, like we did with uh, parallelogram in this example, right? We used two unit vectors in order to visualize other vectors. But here, vectors are not units. You see their length is different. Unit vectors are specific because they have lengths of one. And what they give us, they give us an uh, idea about direction. So X and Y are unit vectors, vectors with magnitude one that make an angle of 30 degree with each other. Okay, so let's imagine this is some kind of um, orientation, X and Y that have 30 degree angle between each other, X and Y, vectors, right? Yeah. Calculate the value of 2x subtract y. So is, is x double the? So we're going to double the x, right? Yeah. Going to be one more x or all together. This would be 2x. Make sense? Yeah. Magnitude yeah. increased two times. So, but here you see, calculate the value modula. Mm -hmm. So we are asked to define the magnitude of resulting vector. Mm. So 2x subtract y, and here it would be y. We remember the triangle law for subtraction tail to tail. So yeah. 2x minus y, it would start in y and travel to the nose of two axes, right? Mm. Or we can inverse y and perform the addition. So inverse y move to the nose of this one, adding up, and we will have exactly the same vector but offset. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Yusuf, can you see it as well? Yeah, I see. No, I mean, uh, do you understand why it is like that? Yeah. Subtraction, addition, you getting it? Yeah, I get it. I just need to do practice, so. So what we're doing right now is multiplying and subtracting and adding. So 2x subtract y, it would be this vector, but we are asked to find the magnitude. And remember, to find the magnitude, we refer to geometry. We construct a triangle, and we know the angle between these two sides of triangle, 30 degrees. What do we need to do to find this side of a triangle? Um, what do we need to do to solve it? Um, is it the cosine law? Exactly. So write it down, please. Let's let's give names to this triangle. Uh, let, let's say this vector C, okay? Or 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 Z. What? Which one do you prefer? Z. No, no, no. Let's go for C. C. Um. Vector C or modulo vector C, right? We're talking about magnitude in triangle. In triangle sides, when we write them down in cosine law, they don't have directions. Am I right? We take yeah. their magnitude. We take their lengths. Yeah. So modulo of C vector squared, right? Yeah. Equals what? y vector squared modulo of y vector or magnitude of y vector squared plus 
x vector squared plus 2 modulo y vector times modulo x vector times cosine of c. At, yes, cosine of c or angle in front of c. Yusuf, do you remember it? Yeah, I think I think I remember it, yeah. Do you remember the sine law? The, the sine law, yeah, I remember it. So Wait, can you I tell it, it? I have it down here somewhere. Um, you have to remember it by heart. Sine law says that C equals sine angle C. A equals sine angle A, right? Yeah. Or is there sine squared? Sine law is A over sine A. B equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. B A over sine A equals B over sine B equals, equals C, over. C over sine C, right? Yeah. Yusuf, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Just keep it in mind. Okay. Because these are most uh, used formulas for this part. Determine the direction. Oh, wait, wait. We didn't calculate the magnitude. Can you calculate it for me? Um, notice that x and y are unit vectors which equal which magnitude is equal to one okay um so it's gonna be oh let me just calculate this what is the cosine of 30 degrees um 0. 0.87 i rounded that if you want to give you longer numbers again. So, no, tell me in terms of uh, fraction. It should be square root oh. of three over two. Okay. Is it? Um, I have to remember the triangles. It Cosine is... of 30 degree. Yeah, so it's the opposite what did you evaluate it it's it's um no i have to memorize Cos it. cosine and sine cannot be greater than one remember it yeah it's just the cosine is of third degrees we were in school we were given these special triangles yeah you you can have a ta table or you have to remember yeah. the ratio. For example, when it's cosine of six uh, or sine of 30 degrees equals one over two. Sine of 30 degrees equals one yeah. over two. Cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three divided by two. Okay. If, if I remember right. Yeah, we were at school, we were given um, special triangles, they called it. And they had the you know. That's how I memorized it. I just need to remember how to do it. Cosine 30 degrees square root of 3 over 2. Uh, special triangles, you mean it's um, like measuring tool on the paper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They visualize you the angles and they give you the values of certain angles, right? Yeah, it's like this. But can you calculate the magnitude of vector C, please? Yeah. Um, uh, or you can use, know what? Uh, Pythagoras square is three, four, five. You can check it. Three squared is nine plus four squared is 16 equals 25, right? This is C squared equals 25, a squared equals nine, and four, four is b squared equals 16. So this is perfect. How did, you, how did you get two for y? No, I didn't get two for y. Yeah, but you're missing, you're missing something because here two is y squared plus x squared plus two times cosine. 
2 times cosine because y times x equals 1. I wrote it down. I'm waiting for your answer, guys. Why are you looking at my answer? Okay, so one. So y squared, y mo modulo, y of modulo, y, oh my God, y vector by modulo or magnitude of y vector squared, what is it? So it would equal, equal two, and then it'd be one squared plus two squared. Y two squared, X also. Ah, X you see? Uh, that's what I missed. Good job. Because it's modulo of 2x. Yeah. So it's going to be 5, not 2. Yeah. You see, that's why you shouldn't look at my solution. It's not always right. You got to check it by yourself. And then be 2 times yx, which is oh, you know, yx times cos. Yeah. Cosine, which is square root of three over two. Let's use it like this for now. Well, I was just, right. <laughs> just finished writing it. Yeah, continue. You can you erase the, the stuff you wrote? Okay, okay. Like the beside mine. Yeah, thank you. I'll have to write down here. Cos of 30. That's going to equal five plus. So let's do 30, 30 cos times four plus Wait, wait, wait. Uh, five times square root of three is going to be 8.46? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's take a pure look. Dun, dun, dun. No. It seems like you've mistaken. Oh, oh I, I didn't square root it, sorry. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. You, no you're mistaken. It shouldn't be plus. It should be minus. And you didn't square root it. Yeah, I did the same mistake too. You see? Wait, wait. So where I didn't it to be minus? Oh, indeed. You're right. you're right. It it turns into minus because we have minus uh Wait. Um yeah, it uh, should be minus in the formula, isn't it? Yeah. In cosine law it should be minus. Four. You see, and here they did different. They didn't just apply the subtraction tail yeah. to tail. They okay. used they used a negative y. Can you I hear me? The, yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. I got the same answer as I'm now. So now you just have, just mm, uh, Yusuf, do you yeah. get the same answer? Yeah. Uh, I, did, I I got it wrong the first time because I also missed uh, the signs and the square rooting, but I got it now. So now let's think about it. Uh, how do we define the direction of vector, uh, of the resulting vector of this operation? How do mm -hmm. we do it? Oh. Yeah, basically um, to find the relative uh, direction like in triangle, right? We can find angle in triangle, like this angle, for example. How the side is related to x axis, or how is it related to y unit vector? So, but for convenience, what they did, they translated this triangle in such way 
that we're getting a nice uh, angle here. This is going to be our vector 2x, right? And this is, would be our vector negative y. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. So there, we're working with these two vectors. And what we can see here, this is 2x looking here, negative y, watching this direction. And the resulting vector, what it would be? 2x plus negative y. I just <laughs> cleaned it. We, exactly the same one we found previously. We called it c vector, right? c vector. And how do we define the direction of this c vector? The easiest corner I see here would be this, because this one we already know. This is the angle between y and x before we translated y. You see? Yeah. And this angle is given to us. It's 30 degree. Now we need to find this angle. That's how we're going to understand orientation of, uh, of our C vector. Mm -hmm. So we're basically going to find the C vector with respect to X. Okay. So here I'll give you support. I'm just going to show you the solution for this practicing example and we're going to discuss it we see in this case what we have we have the lengths of each side right mm -hmm. we we literally just found the lengths of every side in this triangle we solved it but we didn't solve it for angles in this triangle and that's what this problem is about find the direction of this vector basically solve this triangle for us that's what they're asking you to do and what would you do in order to find the theta angle? Um, would you do sine law? Exactly. Because in sine law, we know how sides and opposite angles are related to one another. They always construct the same uh, ratio where you see we made a mistake. Sine is on top. And the module of... Uh, side or length of a side is in the denominator. Do you see this? This is the sine law. I think they inverted it. Uh, but uh, yeah, in fact, it, it, well, why do you think it's inverted? It, it doesn't look right to you? Well, on my, pap on my paper, I wrote it differently. You know why? Because inverse if we just inverse this formula, the truth value should remain the same. Right? Uh -huh. It's it's basically same stuff, but uh, multiplied by negative one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doesn't change the resulting value. Mm -hmm. no, okay. In so the, we just plug in the numbers and yeah, but for sine law, that's so. This is why we were looking for module of two x minus y. You see? Okay. Yeah. Because to use it in sine law, please write it down in your textbooks. Okay. So now you know how to use both addition, subtraction, and even multiplication by scalar in simple same task. Here, mm. we practice all of them in order to solve this triangle constructed by vectors. Mm -hmm. Now, in today's class, you learned that vectors have direction. And you understood how this direction can be impacted by uh, scalar. It could be basically reversed by scalar if it's negative. And how direction of a resulting vector, 
depends on vectors we add up or we subtract from one another, right? Yeah. And please remember your old tr uh, trigonometry formulas. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's really, really crucial for vectors because you know why we remember we when we just started studying calculus together i told you who invited invented the calculus isaac newton remember yeah. what i told you he invented it in order to explain uh general gravita gravi gravitation theory general relativity. yeah uh, general no no relativity is einstein uh and uh, gravit uh, basically newton started this whole stuff because he was curious to explain his um uh, new discoveries and how world is made but in understandable language to everyone and how would you explain to other people that there is a planet and there are gravitational lines all over around this planet set, directing towards its center. You would use vectors, right? Vector of gravity force. This is what it is. This is why we do this in calculus with vectors. And imagine if you have two forces acting together, as in an example with boat that is being uh, towed by two other boats, remember? Yeah. Yeah. In when in the last class we used it as an example for addition of two vectors. Is that right? Yeah. So this is basically another physical example that can be solved by using calculus. And at this note, I hope you're satisfied with today's class i hope you learned a lot and please join the google docs uh, document so we can practice problem solving